This power of our God has been seen generation after generation in the repetition of this great miracle of multiplication of matter. It's still going on. I was talking not that long ago to a lassie for whom it had happened in her hands when she was helping with very poor people in Spanish Harlem. She had been told to give out just a small portion given the large number of poor men coming. And she looked at this and she said, no, I can't give that to a grown man. So she gave more than she should have. And she copped on as she carried on giving off what wasn't there. This is not true. She could see the miracle of multiplication happening in her hand. And only when the last of the large number of poor people was fed did the abundance stop flowing. So with that in mind, we need to reflect a bit when we're worried, because worry is, as it were, a takeover bid. We are God, therefore we have to control the universe. Well, we're not. The definition of a creature is one created, and as a potter creates a jar, so too we receive the form and also the matter, and indeed the form of time. Our truth, our nothing. And therefore, the true attitude of the creature is one of gratitude, fundamental gratitude, and not grumbling. What can I grouse about today, we might say? Or, wow, isn't it fantastic? I had no right over this day. Since then, every creature is a benefit from God, says Luis of Granada, who influenced greatly people like Teresa of Avila and John of the Cross. He died in 1588. How can we live surrounded by these proofs of his love and yet never think of him? Notice that when the Lord gave thanks, he looked up to heaven, it was then that the miracle happened. Just trust and things will happen. Don't get in the way. But remember to give thanks. You know that Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich saw Judas coming out of the Last Supper and she made this comment that she saw at that point the gravity of the sin of leaving both the Eucharist and the daily table without giving thanks. If wearied and hungry, you seated yourself at the foot of a tower and a beneficent creature from above sent you food and refreshment, could you forbear raising your eyes to your kind benefactor? Yet God continually sends down upon you blessings of every kind. Find me, I pray you, but one thing which does not come from God, which does not happen by his special providence, why is it then that you never raise your eyes to this indefatigable and generous benefactor? Ah, oh, we have divested ourselves of our own nature, so to speak, and have fallen into worse than brute insensibility. I blush in truth to say what we resemble in this particular, but it is good for man to hear it. We are like a herd of swine feeding under an oak. While their keeper is showering down acorns, they greedily devour them, grunting and quarrelling with one another, yet never raising their eyes to the master who is feeding them. Oh, brute-like ingratitude of the children of Adam, we have received the light of reason and an upright form. Our head is directed to heaven, not to earth, which ought to teach us to raise the eyes of our soul to the abode of our benefactor. Notice that these swine are not looking up, but getting in the way of each other, unpleasant to each other. The irony is that one finds 
super unpleasantness among those who are also looking upwards, things done in the name of the Most High, which make the angel tremble and weep. We have a reference to this in the first reading, these two covenants, one in nature and one, as it were, in grace. Interesting that Arabia comes into this. Things are done in the name of God, which make us cringe. This week I was in Italy, they always call me back for this week in Lent to help, near where I was ordained, and while I was there I opened the phone as I would do once or twice a day to see what was going on, and this, actually two messages came from separate sources. It was the same message twice over. It was something that had come from Paris, gone round Ireland, and it was this. A certain Sister Monica, who was a daughter of charity, that's the one founded by St. Vincent de Paul, she was communicating this message to those in prayer. That the lay group, St. Vincent de Paul, the confraternity, who were in the same spirituality, out there in Syria had been rounded up, and therefore handling married people and children. And they were there, they were being gently invited to convert, and if they didn't, they had ways and means of making them. And if they didn't, then they had it. They would be beheaded, the grown-ups, but it wasn't stopping there. The children also were going to receive similar gentle TLC. They were put in cages, where they still are, I believe, and they were going to be burnt alive if they also didn't comply with the wishes of those who knew better. All in the name of Allah. Now, that's, by the way, still going on, I believe, as we celebrate comfortably here, and some people are still in bed and couldn't be bothered. And the message also came around about the same time, or slightly earlier, from somebody here in Ireland, who by chance had picked this up, which I looked this morning after getting back. It is true. It has happened recently. In this same group of very convinced Muslims who want the state of the Sharia there in Syria, ISIS, they were in the process of butchering and slaughtering, as is their gentle means of evangelization, but one of their number, age of 32, came with an unpleasant and expected end while in this holy jihad which of course is an automatic passport to erect heaven, the best thereof. Well, he was a bit surprised when he found what was at the other end. This is true, apparently, and it's recent. You can Google it yourself if you're that way inclined. Just go under something like this. ISIS fighter dies and is sent by Allah to hell. That's the wrong way of putting it. But what happened was this. He died from the wounds in this combat, and he saw that his soul was coming out, so wow, this is it, I'm going straight to glory. He could start seeing light coming, but what was not his surprise when he found that actually he was not in a bright company at all. He was surrounded by unpleasant beings, demons no less, who were inviting him with the same tenderness to which he was used, down under, down you come with us, this is the way. And he was also immediately given to see with the eyes of the many that he had slaughtered and decapitated exactly what they were seeing at the moment of being executed by him. Through their eyes he was being shown what he was doing and the pain he was causing. It was already a hell, but he was also going actually into the real hell and he was not coming back until he then was given this message from somewhere. If you die now, that is where you will be. You cannot see the light. But he was given another chance, only with this understanding. If you wish to return to life, you can, but you will have to follow the path that I have made out. And he was given to understand what that meant, and he has now become a Christian. Anonymously, of course, because you know what that means if he's found out. But it is fact, and it's recent fact, it's fresh, found fact, for all to see and hear in modern means of communication, straight from down under. Now, this poses a problem. We are taught in theology that every conscience obliges, even 
a misformed conscience, hence the obligation to form our conscience. But the problem is that a conscience obliges. What's going on here? This gentleman seems to have been following his conscience. But I would suggest that he had enough cop on to know deep down in his conscience that it couldn't possibly be right. Who can be when he's chopping off people's necks and also burning children? Do you think they don't know what they're doing? This culture is awful. It's so close to the jaws of hell that one wonders how on earth people, about a third of our human race, can be taken in by this gigantic imposture of a religion. All in the name of grace and prayer. Because these are ritual executions in which prayers are going up all the time. I've just come back from Italy, which is a country, say what you like, where grace is still around because it's still sort of part of life. I was called there precisely because they all the houses and shops, the factories and offices, dentists, everything in the area are blessed individually all through the country. There are little bits of blessing before or after Easter and they mobilize all the pieces they can. So, what does that mean? Say what you like. The church is part of life. Young and old, children and grandparents, they all say, please come in and bless it well. And they do a huge spring cleaning. All the bedrooms they want blessed. And they're all immaculate. And then some ask for confession, some cry because they've lost a husband. They want to be cared for by the church who by instinct they know is their mother. Because history is part of life. And you can't get away from it so quickly as RTE think. But I want to leave you with one thing. It's this. Grace also is somehow linked with our humanity because God uses that too. And in the case of a priest, it's a great combination. I'll just give you one scene to go away with compared with this butchery all in the name of God. Just on Friday, we had a long vigil before the Blessed Sacrament because grace also means healing of the soul, confession, the whole parish confessed. And I was moved. I was moved by this. In Italy, things are a bit casual, but they work because they work in a relaxed way. All they did was this, create with the help of the nuns, young nuns, beautiful Tese music, not recorded, but done. Calm lights, candles, incense, the best sacrament, and then us priests in the sanctuary area. No bother, just a tiny stool in front of us, and a little, no, we had a stuff. Only a stool for the priest, that's it. Nothing for them to do except kneel. They had to kneel, which is the way it was done. And that's what hit me. It was like this. One after the other, all ages, they were coming up. There'd be no confession box, but there, they'd actually put their hands on your knees. They'd put their mouth right next to your ear. And wow, I thought, this is actually grace and humanity linked. And you could feel their opening up to Jesus in you. It was all one. Compare that, my friends, with this horrible stuff somewhere else on this same planet. Does not that tell you something about the God we have? Grace means love. Grace means tenderness. Grace is not complicated, but it means serious forgiveness and love. Sanguine 
nobis Mortis in examine. O Jesu Dulcis, O Jesu Pie, O Jesu Pie Maria.